When we think about fancy watches, we think about elegant dress watches that slip under a cuff, or watches associated with lavish lifestyles on board yachts and jetting around the world. We think Swiss and occasionally German luxury brands, expensive materials like gold and diamonds, high horology complications like tourbillon, perpetual calendars and moon phase, as well as complex movements. When we think about digital watches, many people think the total opposite. That is, chunky things used as beta watches that are made in the Far East that just give us the time in a no-fuss way. In this video, I intend to show you that in the world of digital watches, by which I'm talking about LCD and LED display watches, there is of course luxury mechanical digital watches, that there's watches that can be dress options, worn on the yacht or on business trips, have been produced by luxury Swiss brand names, can be made from premium materials, have emulated high horology complications, and even adopted fancy movements. Plenty of options for you fancy people out there, so let's get the after dinner chocolates out and have a peruse. Now the original digital LED watches were absolutely luxury items, with the Pulsar even coming in an 18 karat gold case. Across both the US and Switzerland, there were LED watches that came in very fancy boxes, such as the Girard Perigo Casquette, this JLC LED watch, and a Longine Gemini. Even the Soviets were in on the game. This continued into the original LCD models of the dynamic scattering display variety across various Swiss brands and the Clepsydra collaboration between Longine and Texas Instruments, as well as field effect display models like the Gruen Teletime. From Japan, Seiko had options like these slimline front button models, as well as this Anadigi option, and Citizen also had some very smart looking digitals. One of my favourites, Orient, had very classy looking offerings, I particularly like their solar models, and the Japanese electronic heritage brands like Casio had options like those that you can see on screen, and Sanyul had these formal looking options, before everything went really sporty in the 80s and 90s. In the US, Timex had some nice options in the Q Timex range, and Texas Instruments with their normal LCD range, as well as this pseudo analog number. And in Germany, Crystallonic had some cool options, Young Hands did too, Ruler from what was East Germany, and later on Braun came out with some very classy looking offerings. Switzerland had watches from Sikora, which is closely related to the Breitling brand, Longine, Hoyer, including their more recent Micro Timer, Mondaine, Mido, and even Rolex flirted with launching an LCD, although granted a pseudo-analog, under the name Fan. But I'm going to double click into four watches that go beyond just smart design and bring in some proper luxury elements. First, the Bulliver Phantom. Now Bulliver has some cool looking LEDs and LCDs, I've done a whole video on it, but the most ridiculous was the 18 karat gold Bulliver Phantom, made in small numbers using a Swiss Ebuchet SA movement. Second, the Omega Equinox. Now Omega made multiple classy looking digital watches and hybrid digital and analog watches, such as this Seamaster Multifunction, which is a precursor to my beloved X33, but the uber classy Equinox is the digital watch world's answer to the JLC Reverso. Third, the Fleming Bo Hansen designed Watch, which was the first venture of Switzerland based Ventura watches into digitals. This beauty was winning prizes for design and is very fancy, I think. Fourth, ETA, the big Swiss movement house, did hold on for quite a while, making digital modules. These included the basis for the Breitling Aerospace and this neat three window digital. But the one I'm calling out is one of the last hurrahs of the Swiss pure digital catalog, the Memo Sale, complete with timer and a nice match for our fancy yachting lifestyle we alluded to in the intro. We do see the occasional yacht timer option from Casio, but a more recent posh one is this one from Breitling. That's us done with pure fancy aesthetics, let's get into some proper horology, the world of fancy complications. A date complication isn't really that fancy I suppose, but this is still an excuse to drop in one of my favourite watches that's just about a digital, with the Zenith Time Command having that fun little LED digital display at the bottom. But the world time capability is definitely in the fancy realm, designed for jet setters going round the globe on important business. Now Patek Philippe's original Louis Cotier inspired watch options set the bar here for this complication. An icon of design here from the digital watch sphere is the Seiko M158 and the FC001 Pan Am, 
which emulates the look of this classic function with all of the city names around the outside. Even fancier, Seiko integrated a full world map into the display screen with the A239. Jet setters can be well set with a digital watch of this type. And for the interplanetary jet setters, you've now got the Omega X33 Mars timer. Perpetual calendar is the pinnacle of mechanical complications in that it incorporates day, date, month, and also accommodates leap years. The digital equivalent, or the Seiko M518, is also a perpetual calendar, although the leap years were only programmed to 2009. Although if you have one, bring this picture down to Sanger Harris and they promise to reprogram it for you. In addition, I give you the Casio Universal Calendar. Of course, this is pretty easy in the digital realm, and indeed pretty much any Casio watch, or indeed pretty much any digital watch you pick up these days, will be accurate until at least 2099. But let's get into the real high horology stuff, the moon phase. I've covered this at length elsewhere, but the classic digital moon phase is of course the Casio moon graph. And if we're looking to be very fancy, why not get a metal version? But good luck finding many at a reasonable cost. But one of the crazier complex watches in this realm, although far from elegant as it's a very thick guy, is the Yes watch. This has sunrise, sunset, moonrise, moonset, lunar phase, digital time pre-programmed for 650 cities, equinox and solstice, alarm and compass. Now good luck integrating that into a fancy mechanical watch. Now I've not been able to find an LCD digital watch marketed as a minute repeater. Closest is a mechanical digital watch from the Arlong and Zerner Gap in the Market Alert, but I will squeeze in that you should check out the Citizen EcoDrive minute repeater. I'd also pay lots of money for a digital version of the Omega Chrono Chime. Now there is a real niche. But more crazily, there's actually a digital watch with Tourbillon. Yes, I'm not making this up and it's not just the Tourbillon face for Galaxy smartwatches. I give you the Lankzet Smart Tourbillon watch. Now these guys won a Muse Award gold medal this year, and as I understand, they are positioning it as both a pleasant sounding distraction and a 60 second timer, as once you've wound it up using the crown, it should take 60 seconds to complete a cycle. Not the original intent of a tourbillon, but it's definitely different. So we've seen the dress digitals and digital complications, fancy materials next. Now a key thing a pure LCD watch is missing is a dial. So we can't compete with your day dates with all sorts of exotic materials. And the fanciest in my book, the enamel dial watch. And shout out to Anne Ordain for keeping that alive in a more affordable package. But we do have the watch face surrounding the LCD display. And there are some beauties, especially from the 70s, that have made some fun use of this space. These orients for me just scream 70s. You want gold? We've already mentioned the original Pulsar and they did their calculator watch in gold too. As did Hewlett Packard. And we've also mentioned the Bull of a Phantom, Omega did an LED watch in gold, and even the humble G-Shock Square has been produced in solid gold. You want diamonds? Not only do we have the aftermarket mods such as Floyd Mayweather's Diamond G-Shock King, we've got the Ventura Spark PX Diamond Limited Edition, and Tag Heuer have done the micro timer with diamonds. And this Seiko SDGA 011 looks quite diamondy. And if you want super crazy, check out this Diamond Digital Tag Heuer that is apparently owned by Uma Thurman and worth $200,000. Casio has been playing around with some fancy materials in the MRG range, which comes with the luxury price tag. At £3,600 we have the MRG B5000, which utilises TI-64 and DAT-55G titanium in the case and bezel, a Coberian bezel top, and a gold-plated retainer plate for the module. At £6,729 there are some similar materials in the MRG B2000 BS380R. Halder have used fancy materials in their dual mechanical and digital watches for space, racetrack and air, with Tecamex being a proprietary material that they seem to be very secretive about. Ventura have titanium and steel in their watch range with proprietary alloys, with the MGS watch being north of €1,500. You see some similar vibes to Ventura with bronze Swiss made options, this Lip Style Digital, and this brand Alley from Germany that seems to have disappeared as well as this Void model and Al Fadger. Talking of Ventura, that takes me to fancy movements. One aspect of this is the thermocompensated quartz group of watches, which are the basis of high accuracy quartz or HAQ movements. Breitling used some of this in their super quartz range, Omega in the X33 and Z33 range, but still my favourite madness, as I've got a soft spot for kinetic movements from Seiko, is Ventura's Spark range essentially an automatic digital watch that utilises an oscillating mass to power the watch. 
So if you were put off from diving into the world of digital watches, based on a preference for avoiding big chunks of plastic. Now that's not me, I love them, but if that's you, hopefully this video has opened up digital watchdom a little bit for you in your fancy ways. If you'd like a bit more of a look into the technological side of digital watchdom and the wonders there, I think you may like the video that's on screen now that looks at the digital watch technology tree.